well, pr protein is one of the things that mTOR senses, right? And it decides, okay, I've got protein, I should be growing. Uh, and, you know, we want to not activate protein all the uh, mTOR all the time. So do you see any concern with mTOR being overactivated? <clears throat> so, okay, first of all, you've got anabolism and catabolism, and you've got, um, um, you know, basically uh, – excess calories and then insufficient calories. And you have this basically storing calories and burning calories. And it's supposed to be a yin yang. They're supposed to be back and forth. You have to have mTOR signaling some of the time and then not uh, not being signaled some of the time to be healthy and balance these out, you know, sort of a yin and yang. And I think that what most people aren't aware of is that the what mTOR is mostly being triggered by is energy availability and caloric availability. And 91% of Americans are over fat, which means they're, they have too much fat in their fat cells. About 76% of the entire world is over fat. And the way this works is you have your fat cells expand as they store fat and they have a maximum diameter. They can't get bigger than, you know, about 140 microns or so. So if you have a super lean, lean person who's hungry all the time, their fat cells are, you know, 80 microns, but then they get fatter and fatter and fatter. They, you know, the fat cell literally max, max out in, in diameter. Um, when that happens, your body tries to sprout new fat cells. First of all, you, you make them under your skin subcutaneously, but if uh, when you run out of new fat cells or, or genetically it, people are limited as to how many of those they can make, then you have to sprout new fat cells in the visceral area. And that's your abdominal fat, which is you know metabolically unhealthy. But even there, people have a maximum amount of new fat cells that they can sprout, which is genetically determined. And then you have, so you have a certain fixed amount of fat cells they all have a certain fixed diameter. Well, what happens when they're all as large as they can get? You can't make new ones. Okay, now that your body has to shove that fat anywhere it can. And that's when you get fatty liver and fatty pancreas and fat storage in your heart and your arteries and your uh, muscles and you get ectopic fat storage. And now that's where you get uh, insulin resistance. What insulin resistance is, insulin is just trying to clear fuels out of your bloodstream. And fuels stay in your bloodstream when they have no place to go because your fat cells are full. Like triglycerides, for example, triglyceride is fat energy in your blood. Um, uh, the lower your fasting triglycerides, the more metabolically healthy you are. That's because someone who's really, really thin, who's been dieting, who's nice and lean, their fat cells are, you know, 80 microns in diameter. When they eat fat, the fat cells just suck it right out of the circulation on the very first pass and uh, store it all and the bloodstream stays very low in energy and that's people who are insulin sensitive if you, like you know i'm super lean my fasting insulin is like a one so i have plenty of room for fat cell uh plenty of room in my fat cells to dispose of energy but someone who's over fat their fasting insulin might be 10 well the average in america right now is 15 based on the latest enhanced data set and uh, I have patients whose fasting insulin is 30 or 50 or 70 or 90. Um, that's when they're fasting. That's just all the day, all night when they're not eating. And that's because their fat cells are overfilled. The energy is just circulating in the bloodstream. They have high triglycerides. They might start having high glucose. So the end stage of that is type 2 diabetes, where your cells are so full of fat that they refuse glucose as well. And then your blood sugar is high all the time. And that's literally what diabetes is. It's just peak over fatness where energy has no place to go. Uh, your cells are all full of fat. Then they refuse glucose. Then the glucose is high in your bloodstream. What happens to people who are over fat and energy toxic and have too many fuels in their bloodstream is their insulin's high all the time. And this is triggering, this is stimulating the absolute hell out of mTOR. There's literally nothing you could do with protein that would come close to the area under the curve mTOR stimulation from just being over fat. When you're over fat and you have energy toxicity and you have too much fuels in your bloodstream all the time, your insulin's always high, you're just constantly triggering mTOR all day, every day, all the time, 24, seven, 365. Uh, and that's so much more mTOR area under the curve than anything you do with protein. You know what I'm saying? So like, like, uh, like let's say I look at my, uh, overweight, overfat, diabetic, average American patient, right? <clears throat> you know, because everybody's got metabolic syndrome. They're eating, you know, 80 grams of protein a day. 
but they're eating 3000 calories. So they're eating, you know, 300 grams of carbs, hundred grams of fat and only 80 grams of protein. And they're, you know, 50 pounds overweight, their fasting insulin's 30, their tri fasting triglycerides are 200. Yeah, they're just basically a wash in energy. mTOR is being triggered all the time. They have a radically increased risk for every cancer known to man, which you have with uh, um, insulin resistance. Basically, all of your cancer risks go way up. Your breast cancer, your prostate cancer, your colon cancer, your endometrial cancer, all of your cancer risks go up. Um, and then look at me, right? Okay, I'm eating... I, I, instead of 80 grams of protein a day, I'm eating 160 grams of protein a day, right? Oh, that's twice as much protein. Ooh, mTOR. Oh God. You know, I think of how much mTOR stimulation I did going from 80 grams of protein to 160 grams of protein. Oh my God. I get this acute spike of mTOR after my meal for an hour or two from the protein. But think about the other 23 hours in my day where I just walk around super thin with a fasting insulin of one, my tri fasting triglycerides are 50. Um, and my, you know, my A1C is low, my blood sugar is low. Uh, I, you know, I have plenty of room to store any, any incoming energy. So these mTOR spikes are very transient and come right back down to baseline again. And I don't have this huge area under the curve every minute of every day just from being overfat. And I'm driving my leanness by targeting all this protein and intentionally eating twice as much protein as everybody else walking around. But downstream of that, I eat, you know, half as much non-protein energy calories. And then I get to be thinner and I get to have better metabolic health. And so like looking at the acute transient spikes of mTOR from protein and using that to decide to go on a low protein diet is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Cause you're literally just going to eat to satiety. Anyway, you're going to overeat non-protein energy calories. You're going to be fatter. You're going to have a way more insulin resistance and way more mTOR area under the curve. So it's just like the most short-sighted, ridiculous thing I've ever heard where people conflate acute spikes in mTOR from protein with the chronic mTOR simulation you get from over fatness. And it's just completely moronic. Like people are, uh, I don't know who, <laughs> who is worried about this, but they really need to reevaluate.